how's your comprehension when you're listening that fast? Like people always are like, oh, but like obviously if you listen to audiobooks, a like hundred audiobooks that you're like, yeah, but like obviously you don't like actually take any of it in. A hundred percent. If I listen to something three times, I'll have it memorized. I typically listen and read at the same time. The problem is my reading sucks, but Speechify highlights words as it goes. People with dyslexia, it's a decoding problem more than a reading problem. Through Speechify, I learned how to sight read. So if I see the word house 500 times a month in random text, and then I hear it at the same time, next time I see house, I treat it like an emoji. Like I just know that those shapes mean house. It's just most people with dyslexia never get over that gap to be able to sight read. And so for me, I hear, I listen at the same time. And so my retention goes up, my comprehension goes up, my understanding goes up. I can do it faster and there's no fatigue. When you get good at that, you can start walking around, juggling, driving, working out, cooking, whatever, and still listen. You know, when you go to first grade, no one expects you to read well. They expect it to take, you know, 10 years, 12 years before you're actually a really good reader. You gotta practice listening too. And so no one who I've ever met was good at listening in the first podcast or the first audiobook they listened to. Typically, it takes about 10 audiobooks before you become a fluent listener. And once you become a fluent listener, you can listen faster, you can retain more, you can do other things at the same time, and you understand better. And so it's literally just a function of practice. And if you practice, you get really good at it, and then it becomes an absolute superpower because you can intake the internet three times faster than everybody else, and you can do it while you're walking around or doing whatever you want. Yeah, one of the nice things about this is that it's, it, it's in a way very passive practice, but it really just is a case of start listening at one time speed. And then 1.1 is not, it's not that bad. And then you get used to that, 1.2, it's not that bad. I think Malcolm Gladwell in one of his books, I think it's Blink, he talks about uh, conscious versus you know passive uh, practice. Yeah. And conscious practice, you know, most people don't type at 140 words per minute, even though they're typing all day. But if you deliberately, deliberate practice, deliberately practice typing faster, you'll get really, really fast. So with Speechify, because it's passive, the computer does the work for you. What we do is there's an automatic speed ramping algorithm. And if you turn it on every thousand words, it increases the speed by five words per minute. And so people end up listening really, really fast. Um, one of the things we talked about in our previous things, so well, I'm, I'm sure we're gonna re redo some material, is the criticism that people have of like, hey, look, man, why does life have to go so fast? Why can't you like enjoy, oh, you know, you're one of those toxic productivity hustle culture bros that encourages people to listen and watch things faster than they should. That's, that's not how the artist intended it. Like all of those things. I mean, you're like me. 50% of my Audible library and Speechify library are fantasy books. I'm not <laughs> listening to those things to be productive, man. I'm listening to them because I love them, but I listen to them at 3x speed. Imagine every YouTube video had to be watched at 50% speed. No, we finished the podcast. And so my brain is just adjusted to intake the same amount of information, but faster. It used to be that 60% of kids in high school would read books for fun. This is like 60 years ago. Now it's less than 6%. But when you grow up with Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all this stuff, like your brain needs more information. And even movies, it used to be that the number one movie in the world was Gone with the Wind. That movie would flop today. The speed is too slow. Society is adjusted. And if you adjust with it, you reap the rewards. And I guess the, the, the people who listen to audiobooks at three times speed are a bit more ahead of the curve on <laughs> sort of speed of processing. Yeah. So by the way, if you are able to listen and follow TikTok videos that go really fast, if you're able to listen to a podcast at 2x speed or listen to an audiobook at 2x speed, you have a superpower. Use it. Someone might be thinking, surely it's better to read 10 books a year and really apply their insights than it is to read 100 books a year and not apply their insights. Um, okay, so here's how I think about things. All the knowledge in your brain is like a tree. I think of it as a tree of knowledge. When you go to high school and middle school and you talk to your parents, it builds the bark of your tree. When you go to university and you read more, it builds all, this, all the, the branches. And every book you read is a new leaf of information on that tree. If you don't have a spot to let that leaf land, it'll float away. So for example, if, you know, one of the things I did at a certain point is I listened to the entire Bible in Hebrew. You know, Bereshit Olim Bara et Shammai Vetaretz, right? This doesn't mean anything to you because you don't have context about Hebrew. So you're not going to remember this five days from now. Sometimes it makes sense to re-listen to a book, right? So I listen to How to Win Friends about once a year by Dale Carnegie because I just think it's a great book. And so there's a lot of books that I go back to, but I still find something new every single time uh, because I have that foliage built around that topic. Definitely start by reading. Like reading is the number one way in which I learn. I just do it with my ears. And so start with 10 books a year and understand them well. But if you unlock the superpower of listening and like you and me, you finish, I, I finish two audiobooks a week. I've done that for about 16 years. Okay, you can listen to the same book over and over again, or you can you know, diversify the, the sources. Yeah, one of the things that I found the speed listening really helps with is uh, just reducing the cost of a book. So I was at this philanthropy retreat thing over the weekend where people were talking about AI and biosecurity and pandemic prevention and like how do, how do we avert nuclear war? And I just found myself being like, I have no idea what anyone is talking about here. And so in conversations with people, I was like, what's like the one or two books you'd recommend to kind of get up to speed on what the 
what the, what the hell's going on with nuclear, for example. And this chap who I spoke to who works in policy was like, you know, there's this really good book called The Bomb, which came mm. out recently. And I was like, all right, cool. And immediately just opened up Amazon on my phone, bought it on Audible. I, I saw it was a 12 hour read. I was like, cool, I can get through this in about three Four and a half hours. hours. Yeah. yeah, something like that. And I started listening to it on the drive home. And I now feel like, oh my God, like I now have so much context on the nuclear thing, which is, I, I had zero, on, like other than studying the Cuban Missile Crisis in like history and when I was 15. Beyond that, I knew nothing about any of this. If that had been recommended to me as a book and I would have seen how dense it is, but as an audiobook, as an audiobook at like a speed multiple, it only costs me about three hours of time where I'm driving or at the gym to be able to actually ingest a lot of information about nuclear. Uh, and maybe I can't recite the names of like, oh, in, in 1963, this was the person who was the head of the Department of State or whatever, but I don't really need to because what I care about is getting the gist and a general exactly. understanding of the topic. Plus, it's asynchronous time, right? To read a book, you need to not drive, mm -hmm. not work out, not cook, you're sitting at a desk. Even reading while you're on the train or in an Uber is difficult. But if I'm listening, you know, like here's my, how my day goes, right? I wake up in the morning, AirPods go in, I start listening. I brush my teeth, I'm listening. I'm cooking breakfast, I'm listening. I take them out when I'm eating breakfast with my teammates. And then if I have five minutes between a Zoom call and where I'm in, I'll, I'll listen. And then I finish the Zoom call, I'm gonna head over here, cool. I start listening, I get in the Uber, I like might pick up a phone call or two. The second the phone call ends, I go, back to listening. My AirPods just don't leave my ears. And then I only stop listening. I texted you, hey, I'm downstairs, but I can do things and listen at the same time. And when you show up downstairs, I stop listening. And so all that dead time in the day, typically it's like three to four hours. I'm listening to a book, but I'm listening at 3x speeds. Lovely life. <laughs> um, now, that thing that you just said, I imagine there are some people listening to this thinking, oh my fucking God, that sounds incredible. And oh, just best. as many probably thinking, oh my fucking God, that sounds like the worst thing in the world. This guy's a psychopath. I mean, most people do the same thing, but with music. When you listen to music, it's exactly like listening to a book, especially if you pay attention to the lyrics. By the way, one really cool thing is if you start listening to a lot of audiobooks, you will notice and remember all the lyrics from all the songs you listen to. Most people who I am friends with, you know, they listen to the beat or the melody, and they don't necessarily recall or understand the lyrics. They need to look at the lyrics on their phone to really intake them. For me, like both happen because I've trained that part of my brain. But if you already do this for music, why do you do it with music? Because it enriches your life. It makes you happy. Well, the way of kings enriches my life even more than music. And so again, it doesn't matter if it's fantasy or fiction or philosophy or sci-fi. I listen because it makes me happy. It's, it's beautiful, it's enjoyable. I'm living inside this world. And the joy that you get from a book, if you read a book, is so much deeper than the joy you get from watching a movie or watching a TV series. And so I don't watch TV, I don't watch movies. I just consume books, but I do it with my ears.